Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Father, I will come to you today, Lord, asking that you will help show us the flaws within our life, that we may clean them up and become these living stones to be placed in your tower. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. And so be it. Hey, y'all. Coach in the fight here. Got Stacy with me. Shalom. We're in part what? We are in part four. Part four of this mini series on the Shepherd of Hermes, Visions 3. And in this class, we're going to be discussing the various stones that make up this tower shaped temple that some will actually call the third temple. Yeah, in this um, part, we will be talking about the crust of the building. We will be um, talking about the stones, um, the different shapes of them, the different sizes, and we know that the stones are us. Yeah. So in this chapter, in this session, we'll be learning a lot about ourselves. Yeah, like we're looking over here in First uh, Peter chapter 2 and verse 5 from the New International Version. It says, ye also, like living stones, are built into a spiritual house. So, without Peter knowing about this book from the Shepherd of Hermes, Peter already understood that we would be like these stones. We are the stones that make up this spiritual tower. Mm -hmm. And like we said in this class, we're going to be talking about these stones because everybody in humanity has a stone. No matter if you are a blasphemist or atheist or a believer or a non-believer, everybody has a stone. Mm -hmm. But you can imagine not all of these stones will be accepted in the building of this tower. Yeah. In this class, we're going to discuss which of these stones will be accepted. Or I, I want to say personalities. I don't know if the different stones are different personalities or characteristics. I'm not sure how to describe it. But we'll discuss the variations between some of them. Some of them are discolored. Some of them are misshaped. Some of them have other kinds of flaws in them. But what we want to do when we go down through here is we want to make sure we try to recognize our stone, who we are. How do we fit in this building process? Because if somehow we fall for idea that our stone is perfect before our Father, and we need no corrections, then we're going to find ourselves excluded from this temple, find ourselves excluded from this tower. I remember in the um, when you were in the um, nuclear power industry, upon being hired, you had to go through an interview, and I remember you saying you did a personality test. What was the name of that test? Um, they gave us a lot of a lot of personality tests. Um, we took the Myers Briggs yeah, test. Yeah, that's it, the Myers Briggs. And so this is sort of like the Myers Briggs test of scripture, where you will learn about yourself. So I would encourage everyone to just closely pay attention and try to find your personality. Try to find the characteristics that you have that are you know a little um, off from scripture and let's try to get them right myself included this is a lesson for me as well yeah it's necessary absolutely we have to get these right because you know if you don't the, the thing is you're going to be recycled as we say you're going to go into the spirit world where you'll spend some time being purified in the spirit world and then you will come back to the planet you'll come back to earth as a child that's what it talks about in this book about being placed in an inferior spot. You will not have the opportunity to be the new Noah's going forward. For it. You'll be the grandchildren of Noah. Yeah, and there is no way for us to know because the Father has put a veil over it that we cannot see. So we don't know how many times... We have been, you know, in this circular position where we went into the spiritual world and came back out. So, you know, we want to get it right. Yeah. We don't want to go back into um, this place where we're put in the position of becoming a child again. Because, you know, we learn not only um, 
in the third testament but Hermes says well how you know being in the spiritual world is not a fun place it's where we're purified so you know that's like what gold being purified you think of sil silver being put you put through fire and you're standing before the father and letting him know that yeah once again I didn't you know uh, complete the the mission I didn't um, um, I failed the agreement that we made yeah, yeah. that's mm -hmm. kind of bad yeah and the last thing I'll mention out of this verse over in first Peter is how it's talking about a holy priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ um, that's another reason why it's important to get this because we're going to have to be the teachers going forward. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to um, help the other ones that come behind us to understand these truths, even if it's decades down the road and these are the children being born again into our families, we're going to have to understand what we're learning over in the Shepherd of Hermes so that we can raise a new type of people that will only exist in the kingdom of heaven, that thousand year reign that we hear about. All right, with that, we're going to jump right into it. If that's not enough information for you, uh, please go and see part one of this series where we went into great detail on this book and even a little bit in part two of this series. Um, but in here, we're assuming that you are caught up with us and ready to hear about these stones. So we're going to jump right into it. We're getting this information from this website called um, en.wikisource.org, which thankfully they offer us the opportunity to see this book digitally. And we're going to look here in uh, Vision 1, and we're going to jump all the way down to, I think, verse 51. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go. Verse 51. Here now, then, concerning the stones that are in the building. Again, if you're just tuning in, we've already seen the vision. Uh, Hermes, it, 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 you got two, two uh, characters who's being talked about here. You got Hermes, who is a human just like us. And then you have this vision of the church. And this would be the big C church that was created before the earth was created. Uh, some equate it to the being the Holy Spirit. But she has already uh, shown Hermes a vision. And now she's going to explain the, um, the stones of this vision. She, what she showed him was the building of this tower made out of these stones. And now she's going to explain the stones. 52. The square and white stones, which agree exactly in their joints, are the apostles, bishops, and doctors, and ministers who, through the mercy of God, have come in and governed and taught and ministered holily and modestly to the elect of God. Both they have fallen asleep and which yet remain, and have always agreed with them, and have had peace within themselves, and have heard each other. So these are the first stones that we heard about. These stones, if you remember, these stones came out of the deep. They the came white out and of round ones, yeah. Well, the white and square ones. White and square ones, right. Yeah. Um, and they're square because of how it says there that uh, they taught and ministered holily and modestly to the elect of God. Um, being square, I believe we're going to read here and maybe in the next verse how the doctrine that they're taught matched up perfectly. You know, unlike today when, you know, you go to from one church to a different church or one YouTube channel to a different YouTube channel, you could get a completely and entirely different message on what the Father is trying to, you know, make sure that we understand. There's different doctrines. Well, these white and square stones, their doctrines matched up perfectly. Mm -hmm. And one thing we have to remember that we learned is that she told Hermes that these events have already taken place, as if this is the past tense part of the building of the tower. These apostles, these bishops, these doctors, they lived long time ago. Um, if you want to get into the current portion of this vision, you'll jump over to similitudes where it is more present day and even future tense as far as the building of this tower. There was a break in there um, that took place. 
These are the foundations of the tower, is that correct? Yeah, these will be some of the foundations of the tower. It, but you notice it says uh, apostles, bishops, and doctors, um, and ministers. But the, some of the other foundations were the patriarchs and the prophets. Mm -hmm. So, I'm thinking that, you know, it's a good thing that they are the foundation because the foundation needs to be steady, it needs to be strong, and it doesn't need to have any cracks or clefts in it. So, yeah, these it, are the ones that we think of that walk with the Messiah that, you know, were in that time of uh, the era. Yeah, and if you think, you know, a lot of these people had writings, almost all of them had writings, you know, Enoch had writings, Moses had writings, Abraham, all of the prophets had writings, those are the foundation stones, and you can imagine if you picked up one of their books, and they said something that didn't fit in perfectly with the rest of it, like you said, if they had a flaw in their doctrine, it could actually damage, um, our understanding, mm -hmm. you know, it puts you in that, you know, um, I hate to pick on Paul a little bit, but there are some people that will go and read Paul's doctrine and they'll get a little bit off track. Yeah, yeah, and it's not because Paul was wrong, it's because of our understanding of Paul's writing. Well, Paul, you have to remember that Paul was the designated teacher for the Gentiles. Correct, correct. There will be no Gentiles in this tower. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not talking about, you know, bloodline. They sure there will be people who would look like Gentiles of old, but, you know, even they will be converted over to what's known as spiritual Israel correct. by the time we get into this tower. There will be no Gentiles in the kingdom of heaven. Right. All the Gentiles are going into the spirit world. They call it the rapture. 53. For their cause, their joints exactly meet together in the building of the tower. Yeah. So, you know, and what it's talking about is how their message was perfect. Mm -hmm. yeah. 54. They which are drawn out of the deep and put into the building, whose joints agree with the other stones which are already built, are those which are already fallen asleep and have suffered for the sake of the Lord's name. So here it is making a distinction between those that came out of the water. Now, opposed to the ones that came off of the dry land, these are the ones that were already asleep. This would have been those people that the Messiah went and got out of paradise when they put him in the grave. He was in the grave for three days. Mm -hmm. He went and got people like Abraham and those guys out of the underworld. What it was is they was actually in paradise, um, basically waiting for the Messiah to come to give them the opportunity to go into what we would call the kingdom of heaven. Yeah, they were in that place where the Messiah told the the um, the thief, I believe he was, that was hanging on the cross alongside him, that he would go to um, that day with him. Yeah, that very day, right? Mm -hmm. But it's important to understand how the Father, how the Messiah said that the kingdom of heaven was at hand. That was a significant change. And that's what he brought to when he came was he gave us the opportunity to have our Father in heaven as our king, as our ruler. Mm -hmm. yeah. But notice how down there it says that they have suffered for the sake of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So, and this points to how everybody has to go through something. Yeah, we just don't want to go anything. So it's hard, through anything. So it's hard for us to accept the reality that we're going to have to go through something. We we just can't. You know, you know. You always hear the old people say, "A uh, bed of roses." That you know, we this life is just not going to be given to us. And then, as a bed of roses, and then we go and be with the Messiah, or go and be with the Father. Uh, we, we have to go through some things. We have to go through some trials and tribulations, and that is what seems to awaken us. That's sad, but... Yeah, we have to remember, like over in the book of Acts, where it tells us in one verse that it is necessary that we go through much tribulation in order to get to the kingdom of heaven. Nobody's going to make it there without going through trouble. 55. And what are the other stones, lady, that are bought from the earth? I wouldn't know what they are. Now, we should be using this as a key because over in the book of Revelation, it talks about, you know, how you had these beasts that run or rose from 
the uh, uh, the abyss or one who came out of the sea and then you had this other beast that came out of the dry land I personally believe that this is what oh I believe that they're actually talking about the same thing here where you have those who were asleep so you have the or existed a long time ago and so when we read over in the book of Revelation how it said the beast came out of the sea it's talking about these ancient beast that's been around for a long time like the Grecians and the Romans and you know the Assyrians or whatever but then in Revelation it says and then he saw another beast come out of the dry land that will be a more modern beast to me pointing to the United States of America 56 she answered they which lie upon the ground and are not polished are those which God has approved because they have walked in the law of the Lord and directed their ways in his commandments. Okay, now notice right here that these stones are not polished. That seems like it should seem odd as many times as we've read this book because all of the stones have to be corrected. Yeah, I see, I read that and it says they are not polished yet they are approved. Yeah, again we're talking past tense here. Got to remember that. So, you know, all of these visions have been fulfilled already. So, it's talking about people who were somehow teaching the correct doctrine or understanding the laws or had completed their their love mission even before they had to deal with these virgins that we're going to hear about here lately. Okay. You know, the rest of us, we had to go through these virgins. Right. You know, we had to talk to that, that one called Faith, that mm -hmm. one called Long Suffering we're going to hear about. And the thing about it, I believe what that points to is the, t the deterioration of humanity where we are turning towards stuff like hate and selfishness and pride and arrogance. Whereas before, these individuals here didn't have that to deal with so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They didn't have to deal with the um, anger and the gossip and all that other stuff. Lying yeah. prophets and, you know, all of that stuff. Right. You know, and, but, humanity, yeah, but humanity at this point has deteriorated to the point where none of us are acceptable stones. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all going to, and that's... Like we was talking about earlier, reincarnation, you know, that's primarily why we have had to come down here so many times. In fact, that's why we are here actually now ready to go through this tribulation because, you know, we're the bad kids. Yeah, you don't want to believe it. You don't want to think that you are actually, you know, the left behind. I remember when you first, you know, started teaching that. And, you know, started talking about, you know, I actually think that we might be the left behind. And <laughs> yeah. I was like, uh-uh, no, nah, I don't believe that. I, I don't believe, I don't believe that I was that bad of a person because now I think, you know, I'm a good person. But yeah. everybody thinks that. But, you know, according to scripture, you know, it seems to be that we might have been the worst of the worst. We were the worst of the worst. We, the, we was the hard-headed chaps. And that's, you know, why we're about to get this butt whooping called the tribulation. Yeah, the ones that have gone before us, they didn't have to go through um, this tribulation, this time where the Father says it's going to be so bad that we're going to want to die. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We are going, we are seemingly getting ready to go through that period. Yeah, and if you look at the people who are perishing around us, it seems as though they are the good guys. You know, I've lost a lot of relatives and friends over the few years and you know you sit back and you wonder well why did they have to go why you know they was the good guy compared mm -hmm. to the rest of the ones that they left behind well you know I believe it's because the father is moving the the ones that are in better shape out of the way and leaving behind us people who like I said the ones who need this butt whooping in order to make us to get right yeah and don't necessarily look at their fleshly uh, way of being as you know they no they were bad you know, you have to think about their spirit yeah their spirit were they generous yeah you know you know were they you know um, they may not have necessarily had a full understanding of the law according to Moses like they might not have been you know rabbis or teachers mm -hmm. or whatever but when you look at their lives you know you don't see them stealing. You don't mm -hmm. see them committing adultery. You didn't see them um, 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 breaking any of the other covenant rules. And then you saw a lot of them as being extremely generous people. 
and but then you have to look at the other hand those that were doing those things and actually passed away you know they're going to be back they're coming back as children you yeah. know during this tribulation yeah and they're going to have to deal with it as well and that, that's going to be pretty bad when you know they're going through the tribulation as somebody's child you know and you know, the Father has a way of putting the spirits in the proper household. And so you're right, some of these people are going to be born in bad households altogether. Um, you know, with bad parents. You know, some mm -hmm. of them are going to have bad parents. And that's going to add to the tribulation, the purification process. It's going to help them to gain merits. That makes me think, and then we're going to move on. That makes me think about my grandmother who's 96 years old and she's it seemed that one time that she was actually ready to you know pass away so that she didn't have to go through this tribulation but yeah. she's had coronavirus several, several yeah. times yeah. and she's still kicking and still seems as young yeah. as as I am you know doing different things and but it's like she's not going anywhere she's gonna she's got to go through this tribulation yeah, she, she, she got her she got her portion of it coming <laughs> Okay, uh, let's see. 57. They which are bought and put into the building of the tower are the young in faith and the faithful. And these are admonished by the angels to do well because that iniquity is not found in them. So, now this goes a long way when you're talking about the young in faith and the faithful. Um, it goes a long way like innocency. You know, these, these people have the opportunity to go into the tower. But again, remember that we are talking about those that came from the ground, came from the dry land. Is this like children? Or is it talking about... Um... It could be talking about children, but I believe what it's talking about is people who have a childlike spirit. You know, the, the, like the Messiah said, we would have to be like children. Right. You know, they may be grown adults. But they don't have that haughtiness of the adults. They don't have that arrogance. They don't have, you know, that uh, condescending spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't have guile. They don't have that doubting spirit that comes, you know, when you're old age. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. when, when you're a child, somebody tells you you can fly. You like you, you you start you know thinking about jumping off the roof or whatever. Get you a Superman cape. Get you a Superman cape, but then when you're an adult, you know yeah you, you start to think oh that's that's not possible and all of this. Well you know I believe that this is what it's talking about. These people have a young, um, they're young in the faith, mm -hmm. you know, and you know therefore they had they they're more faithful. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Fifty eight. But who are those whom they rejected and laid beside the tower? So now the ones we've talked about so far, they are the ones who went directly into the tower. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So their stones didn't have uh, flaws that needed any major correction whatsoever. Um, but the, now the ones we're going to hear about now, they are closer to who we are. Right. These are the rejected stones, the stones that's going to need some type of polishing. 59. They are such as have sinned and are willing to repent, for which cause they are not cast far from the tower, but they will be useful for the building if they shall repent. So, and then, so these are the ones who are laid, like I said, laid beside the tower. There are others, we're going to find out, that are kicked far from the tower. Some far enough, you know, that they're actually going to end up on the highway and go into desert places. And some that are going to go straight into the fire. Well, these ones that are just set beside the tower, you know, these angels who are in charge of building this tower recognizes that, you know, these guys, you know, they, they, they won't fit into the tower right now, but they will be useful later on after they have been polished, after they have, you know, had their flaws chipped away, they will be useful for the tower. And again, this is talking about us. We are the ones who who are set beside this tower right now. Yeah, it says, because they will be useful for the building if they shall repent. Yeah, if, if they said, and that's necessary, this main part of this book is uh, repenting, we, mm -hmm. we, uh, changing our minds as far as, you know, these flaws that are um, plaguing us, whether it be hate, whether it be uh, falsehood, 
whether it be selfishness, whatever it is, as long as we have a repentant heart, we have a chance to go into this tower. Now, of course, being repentant is not like saying I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. You know, saying I'm sorry, which doesn't really mean anything, whereas repentance means that you're actually going to correct your ways. It's re it requires action. Yeah, definitely. Good, good way of putting that. Mm -hmm. 60. They therefore that are yet to repent, if they shall repent, shall become strong in the faith. That is, if they repent now whilst the tower is building. For if the building shall be finished, there will then be no place for them to be put in. But they shall be rejected. For he only has this privilege, who shall now be put into the tower. Yeah, so, you know, this is telling us, you know, we ain't got it forever. Yeah, you ain't, you ain't got all day to do this. You yeah. need to get on it. Yeah, you need to, you, you need to and, and you know, that's why you guys are looking at this class is because you're recognizing, you know, these flaws that are in our life and we're getting the opp opportunity to take this action to correct these flaws and we need to be doing so. There are going to be others, there are going to be some that's going to say, you know, well, I don't really care nothing about, you know, my anger, you know, my anger, or my, my um, uh, pride, my arrogance doesn't seem misplaced to me and I don't see no need to change it. Well, those people are going to be shut out of the tower altogether. Mm -hmm. Once you once there, there's coming a day, we'll learn here in this book that there's coming a day when the opportunity for repentance is over. Yeah, that saying that we have, uh, uh, I can, I can forgive you, but I won't forget. That's not true repentance. No, you have to actually forget it and walk away from yeah, it. Yeah, because remembering injuries is is one of the bad things. You know, that's that brings death into our life. Right. Now, notice that part right there where it says that they. If they repent, they shall become strong in the faith. Mm -hmm. I believe, now I could be wrong, but I believe this is saying how they're even going to be stronger than the ones that went before them. Mm -hmm. Because those guys who went before them, they didn't have to go through as many struggles and troubles and purification as the ones that sat beside the tower. So when, when it's all said and done, I mean, it's like the kid who struggled through school, you know, but passed. He's going to have a better understanding of the lessons that were taught because he had to spend more time studying and learning. Whereas the guy who, you know, got it quickly, he, he may not have studied that much at all. Yeah, the kid who struggled will be able to teach the class. Yeah, and that's what I believe it's talking about when it says they will be strong in the faith. Okay. Because they'll be able to teach some of these lessons. Mm-hmm. That kind of goes to that part of the scripture where it says that stone that was rejected will be the chief cornerstone. Yeah, we, exactly. 61. But would you know who they are that were cut out and cast afar off from the tower? So here it is, the next group. So we done went through we the first group who went directly into the tower. The second group we just talked about was the ones who were set beside the tower. And now she's going to talk about the ones that were thrown far away from the tower. You know, they the, the builders know that these aren't going to be needed, so they don't even want to see them no more. Mm -hmm. 62. They are the children of iniquity, who believed only in hypocrisy, but departed not from their evil ways. For this cause... They shall not be saved because they are not of any use in the building for reason of their sins. Now, I haven't done much as far as building stuff out of stones or rocks, but this kind of reminds me of building stuff out of wood, which I have a little bit of experience with. You know, when you when you are building stuff out of wood, you know, you grab a, a two by four. If it's not if it's not the right length, you know, you set it down, you know, close to where you're working at because, you know, you know, I'm going to need a shorter board at some point. Mm -hmm. You know, all most of these boards are eight foot long, but, you know, at some point I'm going to need a four footer. So I'm going to set this six foot board beside the tower and then later when I need it, I'm going to cut it. But then if you come and you find a board that's twisted or rotten or broken all together, you're like, I don't want to have to deal with this one. So then you just sling it out of the place, even put it over there where you're going to put the firewood at because you don't want to tri triple up on it later and think about using it. Right. Nobody wants to deal with a 2x4 that got lots of knots in it. Yeah, or something. Yeah, exactly. Something that's 
you know, not you can't use in the building, you know you're never going to be able to use it, so you're not going to set it down with the other ones right. that's just a little bit short or, mm -hmm. you know, you, you, you throw them away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so here are the ones that it's talking about here. It says, they are the children of inequity who believed only in hypocrisy and departed not from their evil ways. So now when we're talking about this hypocrisy here, this is actually pointing to the ministers and, you know, those people who will look you in your face and say, you need to be holy, you need to be righteous. But then you say, OK, well, does that mean I'm supposed to obey what the scriptures say? And they say, well, no, that Jesus did away with the laws and the, and the commandments and the statutes. We don't need to worry about those at all. And so it, it brings a little bit of confusion. It's like, okay, where is this righteousness coming from if it's not coming from the scripture? If it's not coming from the laws, the commandments, and the judgments, how are you telling me that I need to be holy? Right. Where are you getting your example from? Yeah. And so there's nothing, you know, so that that's a hypocrite that tells you that you need to be holy, but yet they ain't being holy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It says, for this cause they shall not be saved. Uh, because they are not of any use in the building for reasons of their sins. You see right there, because it says, and departed not from their evil ways. Mm -hmm. A lot of these people, they're not going to depart from their evil ways. Mm -mm. You know, we find out that uh, repentance is a blessing. You know, it is a privilege, not a right. Right, it's mm -hmm. a gift. Mm -hmm. Not everybody gets the opportunity to repent. Mm -hmm. And so some of these people whose repentance is not real, they're not even given the opportunity to repent at all. Mm -hmm. And so they'll never depart from their evil ways. Right. And so, you know, they're never going to be useful for the tower. Right. These people will be rejected altogether. Wherefore, they are cut out and cast afar off because of the anger of the Lord and because they have provoked him to anger against them. Yeah, this would include people that are blasphemous. You know, this would include a lot of the false teachers. Um, this would include a lot of the people who are taking advantage of the ministry. Um, Using it for their own prosper, uh, their prosperity. Right. You know, exactly. You know, they, this, this is described in greater detail, like we talked about in Similitudes 9. And this is where, you know, a lot of this information we're getting from is because the same story is just told in more detail in Similitude 9. Mm-hmm. You know, some of these people are taking advantage of widows. Yeah, and yeah. Similar to eight goes into it as well. 64. As for the great number of other stones, which you have seen placed about the tower, but not put into the building, those which are rugged are they who have known the truth, but have not continued in it, nor been joined to the saints, and therefore are unprofitable. So here we back are talking about these ones who are set beside the tower. But I believe it's talking about ones who will still yet not be put into the tower. Whereas the other ones, they were polished and cleaned up a little bit and then used. Well, some of these other ones who don't repent of their ways, even though they're given the opportunity and set beside the tower, will still be swept away when they start to clean the tower up. So are these the one that we would consider, um, it says they know the truth but have not continued in it, nor been joined to the saints. Are these the ones that we would consider backslidden? Yeah, I believe you're right. These are people who, you know, at one point they may have been following the laws and following the commandments, the statutes and the judgments, but then they changed their mind and decided they was going to do something different. Mm -hmm. I believe you're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think we know of people like this. I think we know of one individual um, that fits in this category. Yeah. Um, he tells us, his name is Tony. I'm sure he's not watching this video. <laughs> <laughs> he talks about how, you know, back in the day, he used to read the scripture all the time and follow the laws, the commandments, and the statutes. He saw my library one day and he was like, I got that book. I've read this book. He even suggested one of the books that I have on my shelf now. But. What he talks about was how when he was living the Bible, he lost a lot of his friends and family who turned their back on him. Like most of our families did, most of our friends did, but he decided he was going to put away that holy lifestyle and he was going to become like them. Yeah, he were, was even, I believe, called into the wilderness 
where he was living a set apart life. But, you know, the last time we seriously had a conversation with him, he had um, came out of the wilderness and he was living a more materialistic lifestyle. Yeah. So and he's about ready to go get a job now. Huh? Yeah. Mm hmm. So that's what it's saying when it says he has known the truth, but he didn't continue in it. And then it says, nor been joined to the saints. So that's why you have a hard time ministering to that type of person right now. Right, right. 65. Those that have clefts in them are they that keep up discord in their hearts against each other and live not in peace, that are friendly when present with their brethren, but as soon as they are departed from one another, their wickedness still continues in their hearts. These are the clefts which are seen in those stones. So these are people who are remembering injuries. Right. You know, yeah. You know, people. There's a lot of people out here doing a lot of stuff to us. You know, not only the saints, but you know, the saints are catching their deal maybe even a little bit more as our family members and our friends are doing stuff to us. You know, but we have to remember that you know we're not fighting against flesh and blood we're fighting against principalities and powers right and so a lot of these people are being used mm -hmm. by these angels in order to help purify us yeah you mm -hmm. know somebody come and call you a false prophet somebody come and call you a false teacher you can't really you know lash out at that individual because the father is a just judge and it could be that they're being used by these spirits in order to send you a message. Yeah, when you think about it, they are, if you do make the decision, or if you do unawarely lash back at them, what's actually happen, happening is you're keeping yourself um, out of the tower. You definitely keep, yeah, you definitely, and re remembering these injuries is keeping you out of the tower. A lot of what we're going through is strengthening us so that we have the ability to withstand those fiery darts of the enemy mm -hmm. you know so you know the father uses our friends he uses those that are closest to us to seem seemingly to harm us so that when we actually get to face this antichrist this lawless one then we'll be much stronger we won't fight back you yeah know? Mm -hmm. it does seem like the ones that you love are the ones that you think would love you most are the ones who seem to be um, used more to put you through things. But really all they're doing is they're helping us with our humility. Yeah. Because, you know, the thing about our loved ones, chances are when they come at us, we're not going to harm them. We may fuss at them, may even cuss at them. Right. But we're not going to shoot them. Right. And we're not going to kill them. Right. Well, there's coming a day when the enemy is going to come at us. Somebody that we don't know. Somebody that we don't care about. And if we don't have that humility to withstand those fiery darts. But now that we have been strengthened, we can walk away. Saving our lives and theirs and our position in this tower. Yeah, so we're just getting in. Look at it as we're just getting in practice now. Getting in. It's like boot camp. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where your own drill sergeant, the one who's supposed to be protecting you, is giving you the most trouble. Right, yeah. He, he, he He's the one that's bringing hell in your life. Yes. You know, but it's for your benefit because when you hit the battlefield, mm -hmm. now, you know, what can the enemy do to you? Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. 66. Those that are maimed and short are they who have believed indeed, but still are in great measure full of wickedness. For this cause, they are maimed and not whole. These are people who have sins that they like to keep up with. They have sin in their life and they don't want to get rid of particular sins. Like a person who likes to gossip. Mm -hmm. They may understand that they need holiness. They need to be separated. They may need to be um, righteous. And they're doing that for the most part. But maybe they got a girlfriend in their life committing adultery and they don't want to get away from that yeah I was gonna say adultery would be one of those um, um, that you know is wrong you don't want to be in that situation but it's just so hard to let it go 
Right. And so these are the people who are set beside the tower. They're given the opportunity to correct, but if they don't, they're going they're going away. They're going to be swept away with the other guys that are pushed far away from the tower. Mm-hmm. 67. But what are the white and round stones, lady, and which are not proper for the building of the tower? Now, it's really important for us to get an understanding of these white and round stones because this makes up the majority of us. Yeah. Especially mm-hmm. here in America yes. where we have so much materialism, we have so much wealth that it, it, you for the most part, we're good people. You yeah. know, we may have some bad leadership or whatever, but you know, for the most part, the the, the, the people are the yeah. people are are are, are good-hearted people here in America. And if you ever forget that, you know, pop on the news and look at those places like Syria. Look <laughs> at you know those Middle Eastern places. Even you know even the bad stuff going on over there in Europe and that part of the world. You know. This is a different kind of person that's over here in this part of the world. And that's no accident. We find out by way of the third testament yeah. that the Father has a way of putting those spirits in the proper places. Right. Mm-hmm. But the thing about it, we are round over here. We may be white. Yeah. You know, many of us are, you know, we, we are praising the Father. We are being good people. We're generous. But we are round at the same time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We are the ones who we are going to church every Sunday, but yet and still, it's a lot about materialism. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and that's that's what these yeah, realms that we're going to tell us about is you know our, it is the materialism that is preventing us from going into this tower, and you know primarily because materialism acts as a block for our spiritualism. Yeah, those mm-hmm. two are working against each other. Sixty-eight. She answering said unto me, How long wilt thou continue foolish and without understanding, asking everything and discerning nothing? I guess at this point she was expecting Hermas to start catching on to what's <laughs> going on here. But, you know, Hermas is very humble. You know, he's not making any assumptions at all. He's not presumptuous saying, Hey, I get this. Yeah. No, uh uh-uh. uh. He like, You tell me, I wanna know everything. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. which is great because now we get to read and we get to understand too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sixty nine. They are such as have faith indeed, but have with all the riches of this present world. When therefore any troubles arise for the sake of their riches and traffic, they deny the Lord. Yep, so this is the materialism that's getting in the way of our relationship with the Father. Materialism is bad, guys. You know, having the latest iPhone, having the latest, you know, the best car and the, the Gucci purses and, the, you know, that nice stuff all acts as chains when it comes to our spirit. It blocks our spirit and weighs us down to where we can't have a spiritual relationship with the Father. One of the things that this uh, verse makes me think of are entertainers who a lot of them... Um, especially a lot of the Hebrew or black entertainers, they grew up performing or got their starts in the church choir. Mm-hmm. But they step away from it, you know, once riches are bought into um, the situation, they leave the church and now they're uh, just doing all kinds of abominations and things that the father would not want them to be doing. They yeah. they they believed at one time, but because of materialism, um, now they deny the father. Well, that might explain why when a lot of these people get their contracts or whatever, they don't give them a whole lot of money. You know, they actually give them cars mm-hmm. and, and jewelry. You know, that's why a lot of them, you know, they walk around in their big jewelry and their nice cars you know, in their big fancy houses, but they don't have any money. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's because the industry is trying to keep them in a position where they are dependent on the industry instead of being able to recognize the father in what they're doing right. and maybe even start a ministry through their their music. Yeah. You know, a lot of times we will say, we'll say stuff like, oh, if only... So and so, this big star was was ministering for the father. You know, this tells us that they can't because yeah. they materialism has a hold on them. And you know, it's it's just we you know we need to stop thinking about that. Yeah. You know, that that big star say, you know, 
uh, uh, Beyonce or, or, or if, if she would start ministering for the Father, it would just bring in so many people. Well, she can't. Yeah, because you know, like it says, if she started to do that, you know, if she, if, if she starts to do that, she would put her career in jeopardy. Yeah. She would even lose a lot of her fans or whatever. And for the sake of her riches and stuff, she, she's like, no, I'm, like, she's not going to do it. Even going as far as denying the Lord altogether. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And denying the Father does not necessarily mean get on TV and say, uh, I deny the Father. That could mean, you know, when you, when you have the opportunity to say something or minister to somebody, you just stay silent. Yeah, you mm -hmm. stay silent. Or when somebody is talking about righteousness and holiness, you know, you say something like, you know, that's not necessary. I don't believe we need to right, be following yeah. the commandments. I don't believe we need to be doing what the Bible says do. You know, everybody should be able to live their life. you got to remember that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word is God. So if we're denying the Word of God, then we're actually denying God himself. Yeah, and I have been put in situations when I first start, you know, can't switch from, well, I don't know if I should say the word switch, but um, stop going to uh, church and, you know, taking on the doctrines of Christianity. When you was awoken. I, when I was what? Awoken. When I was awoken, okay, that I was put in a situation where I um, was asked, asked some things and instead of speaking the truth, I actually uh, refused to say anything. I was silent. And, you know, the Father laid it up on my heart that that's actually denying him because I rejected and refused to speak the truth that I had read. I in a, I actually denied him. Yeah. yeah. So it's not something flamboyant as far as people going on television and announcing or denouncing the Father. You know, just, just refusing to say anything or speak the truth um, is also denying him. Mm -hmm, I agree. 70. I answering said unto her, When therefore will they be profitable to the Lord? When their riches shall be cut away, say she, in which they take the light, then they will be profitable unto the Lord for his building. Now, this is, this is important to understand because a lot of people are going through this. It says, When their riches shall be cut away. It didn't say if. Right. Their riches shall be cut away. It says when. It's going to happen for the early birds, for the forerunners. It's already happening or has already happened where mm -hmm. they have been stripped of their riches. Yeah. You know, us included. Mm -hmm. But you got to remember that all of humanity is going to be stripped at some point. Mm -hmm. You know, all the material possessions are going away. You know, we can look at movies like um, uh, I can't remember that Tina Turner movie where she was talking about we don't need another hero. Right. But you have that uh, movie called The Book of Eli. Um, you have all of these post-apocalyptic movies that's telling us where humanity is going to. A lot of Will Smith movies. Yeah, a lot of those movies. And when you see in these movies, these uh, hum the world has changed. The world has gone through what seems like a nuclear apocalypse. And nobody has material possessions anymore. People are walking around dirty and in the same clothes. And, and you know, they're living, you know, in broken, burned out buildings. None of the cars are running. Mm -hmm. And, you know, nobody has anything. They're, they're lined up for blocks and blocks just to get water and stuff like that. That's where humanity is going. And not, not only uh, movies, but we're seeing a lot of people who are, have, who are currently having these dreams. That they're seeing these things. Yeah, that's exactly it. The, the, and the thing about it, all of our riches are going to get cut away. And so it's important to understand this so that when the Father comes and moves in our life and tries to separate us from some of our materialism, that we don't immediately run back and try to get that stuff back. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. a lot of us lost our jobs for the ministry, but not recognizing that we went back and tried to get other jobs and tried to get our life back. That's what the scripture says when it says, you know, don't try to save your life. Right. You know, that life he's talking about is that materialistic, well, that, that, that round life is what he's talking about. That American dream. Yeah, the American dream, exactly. Right, which is not true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a dream. Right. 71. For as a round stone, unless it be cut away and cast somewhat off, its bulk cannot be made square. 
So they who are rich in this world, unless their riches be parred off, cannot be made profitable unto the Lord. So in order to get into this tower, our riches are going to be pared away. Right. It's going, going to be part. And I've gone through this twice, you know, in my life. The first time way back in 1998 when, you know, I call myself stepping out on faith. It was a um, idea that was going around the church at the time. And, you know, I was into the church at the time. And um, the ministers were all talking about stepping out on faith. And I did just that. Just stepped out on pure faith in the, in, 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 in the Word of God, even though I hadn't read it yet. I had faith in it, and I stepped out on it, and I found myself being separated from all of my material possessions, even being homeless at that point. Now, of course, later on, you know, I went to uh, engineering school and got an engineering degree, and before long, I start acquiring much of that wealth back and that material stuff back. And so, in 2015, I actually went through the same thing again, very similar, where I was stripped of all that material possessions. I guess this last time you said it's not going to be a third time. Well, I think that's what it was talking about earlier about being strong in the faith. Because whereas the first time, you know, I stepped out on belief, the second time I actually stepped out on the word because I had read it and knew what it says. And so my faith and strength was much greater at that time. And so, no, there will not be a third time. Oh, you've told me this story several times before, so but I think I've never asked you, and I'm curious as to know, did any of the ministers or pastors uh, step out on faith as you did? did uh, <laughs> no, I don't think any of them actually did. Because you were left homeless at one time. Yeah, I was homeless um, at one time and, you know, sleeping on a park bench or whatever, you know, expecting a miracle to happen. And, and you know, that, that miracle, of course, never came. You know, um, at least, you know, the way I thought it was supposed to come. Right. And but no, those guys, uh, I think they're still up there in, you know, <laughs> driving their six hundred thousand dollar cars and, you know, in their mega churches or whatever. They're just talking about something different. Right. You know, today. Mm -hmm. Seventy two. Learn this from your own experience. When thou were rich, thou was unprofitable. But now thou art profitable and fit for the life which has undertaken. For you also once was one of those stones. So, you know, like you said, a lot of people are going through this. So, you know, the ones who have been separated from their materialism should be able to speak up and talk about how they are now profitable. How they're actually doing something for the kingdom of heaven now. They're in a better position. Yeah. You, you know, like us, you know, when we had the riches, you know, back there in about 2013, 2014... You know, the ministry wasn't doing anything at all. No. Mm -mm. You know, we had a YouTube channel, but we was putting up videos about breeding rabbits and <laughs> weird stuff, you know. Well, we actually didn't even know that we weren't even supposed to be eating rabbits and things like that. We didn't know. We didn't know nothing. You know, even though we had read the scripture, you know, we hadn't lived the scripture. Right. But it was only after our material possessions were stripped away that we actually started living the scripture and it was like that ministry started immediately. Yeah, we were um, we were doing a lot with rabbits and when we started reading, we were like, hey, I don't think we're supposed to be eating this rabbit. And I'm like, what? Well, it's a growth <laughs> like process. Rabbit. <laughs> yeah, it's a growth process. It's like the other day when we realized that we wasn't supposed to be eating tuna too. Right, yeah. You know, that was just, what, a month or two ago. <laughs> They find out that tuna was an unclean animal. Yeah, so we're always learning, yeah. 73. As for the rest of the stones which thou sawest cast afar off from the tower and running in the way and tumbled out of the way into desert places, they are such as have believed indeed, but through their doubting have forsaken the true way, thinking that they could find a better. But they wander and are miserable going into desolate ways. So these are the people who believe that they know better than the scripture. Yeah. They start doubting the word of God. Mm -hmm. You know, some of them are doubting even this book right here. 
But I'm going to tell you that it is absolutely true and correct what you're hearing. This may be in a vision state, but, you know, this book goes on in, you know, into similitudes. And, you know, this stuff becomes more clear that it's actually absolutely true. Yeah. But you have these people who even doubt the Bible and the 66 books of the Bible. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so they find themselves wandering. They have faith in, they, they have faith in God. They believe in God. A lot of them even pray. Mm -hmm. But they have no belief in the word of God and they believe that they can find their own paths. And so they start searching for other books and other documents that they can read. And I ain't talking about other scriptures. I'm talking about other doctrines. So these would be those people who they believe in God, yet they are reading tarot cards and things that, like that. That will fall under reading or horoscopes or... Uh, Ouija boards and things like that, yeah. But it will also be those who listen to the false prophets as well. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know how many of them YouTube channels you watch. You know, I go in and I look at those that I consider my competitors. And one thing that I notice is they're not teaching the scripture. They're not teaching the Bible. Sure, they may reference a verse or two when they're d doing their video, but... For the most part, they're just making up stuff, wishful thinking, mm -hmm. and you know, coming up with fanciful ideas of what they think the Bible is supposed to say. Yeah. Not ever going back and actually looking at what the Scripture says. They are actually wandering spirits. Yeah, changing the Scripture to say what they want it to say, or to make it fit um, the topic they're talking about, but not actually taking the word for what it's saying. In yeah, itself. and a lot of the, a lot of the, a lot of the. The astronomer type ministers are doing that too. Instead of reading the Bible, they're trying to find the messages in the stars. Right. Mm -hmm. What it boils down to is they're trying to find their doctrine somewhere else besides the scripture that our father left here for us. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. But sadly, it says these people will be cast far off from the tower, mm -hmm. even tumbling into these desert places. So what I'm seeing here is that the farther you are away from the tower, the less likely you have a chance of being put into it. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, what we need to be understanding is what it what causes us to get pushed far away from the tower. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not necessarily clefts or those small bickerings between us and our brother and sister. And, right. But false truths will get you kicked out. Far from the tower. Mm -hmm. Doubting would get you in a position where you may not make it into the tower at all. Right. Here thinking that you can find a better way on your own. Well, that has something to do with the first commandments, having other gods yeah. um, before the Father. Yeah, Yeah, that's, that's, that's actually right. That's another way uh, that they're finding their own way is putting their faith in the pagan religions. 74? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Then for those stones which fell into the fire and were burnt, they are those who have forever departed from the living God, nor doeth it ever come into their hearts to repent by reason of the affection which they bear to their lust and wickedness which they commit. So these will be the atheists. These yeah. will be the blasphemous ones. Mm -hmm. They're going into the fire. Right. You know, those ones in the desert places, they, they might actually have a chance of making it back. Yeah, you might actually, actually go and get them. Yeah, you might go and get them or, you know, they may get out there and get thirsty and get hungry and look back and, you know, say, you know, them guys seem to be doing all right over there. Let me wander back over there and see what's going on. These ones that's going into this fire, they're, they're burned. Yeah. You know, there ain't no coming back from that. Mm -mm. You know, this reminds me when it talks about the unforgivable sin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 75. And what are the rest which fell by the water and could not roll into the water? So, you know, I keep referring to similitudes, you know, because, it, again, I'm going to tell you, it's the same story. Just give it in more detail and in a present day. Again, this here is uh, past tense. These have already been fulfilled. But, you know, jump over into similitudes. We did a similar class to what we're doing now for the entire book of similitudes. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and it's 380 some verses, but you can go over and just read the book too. Right. But here he's talking about those who fell by the water and could not roll into the water. And he's going to explain who these people are. 
76. They are such as have heard the word and were willing to be baptized in the name of the Lord, but considering the great holiness which truth requires, have withdrawn themselves and walked again after their wicked lusts. I know a lot of people like this. Yeah. You, you know, there's some that I'm still ministering to, trying to convince them to actually get baptized. Mm -hmm. You know, they want to. They, they, but you know, as soon as you say, you know, let's go on down to this river and, and handle this a little bit, they, they start to back out, start to fishtail a little bit because of what it's saying there. They start considering the great holiness in which the truth requires. Yeah. So they don't want to separate themselves from <laughs> their sinful lives is what it boils down to. That's what it's saying. Yeah. They don't want to be, as you said, separate. They don't want to give up the sinful life that they're leading. Yeah. But the thing is, you know, baptism is necessary for our salvation. Mm -hmm. Absolutely necessary. You know, there, there, there are those wicked ministers who will try to convince you that you don't have to be baptized. But till this day, I have never heard an unbaptized person say that baptism is unnecessary. Hmm. Everyone. That has ever said that baptism was was not necessary and you don't have to do it. You have to be baptized in the spirit and all the white water baptism don't mean anything. My first question is, have you been baptized? Right. And they always say, yeah, yeah, yeah I have, but it don't matter. Mm -hmm. that, that reminds me of how the Gospel of Thomas says they're like the dogs who sleep in the crib with the cows. Right. Mm -hmm. They don't want to eat and they don't want the cows to eat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another thing the scripture says is... Um, how great holiness and the truth requires that you um, separate yourself from some of the worldly stuff. Yeah. And that speaks of how people are saying, just because I believe, I believe in the Father, yet they still do some of the same things they did when they didn't have the truth. Yeah. You have to start separating yourself. And it's not going to be, you know, today... I know the truth, and tomorrow my life has changed. No, it's a gradual thing. It's a gradual thing. You know, for many of us, the first time we get baptized, we don't really realize what even just happened to us. Mm -hmm. You know, and myself included, you know, I went and dirty myself right back up, not realizing that my spirit had been cleansed and forgiven of all of the sins that I had committed before mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. You know, and so that's what's actually happening by way of the baptism. That's what the Messiah did for us. That's what it means when it says that the Messiah died for our sins. Now we can actually be baptized in his name and purified of every sin that we've ever committed, in, maybe even in all of our lifetimes. Yeah. not sure, but, yeah. you know, it gives us a fresh, clean start, you know, and so baptism is necessary to go into the kingdom of heaven because, you know, once we have been cleaned and cleansed of those flaws and those uh, sins, then we can start to hear from our conscience again. Right. And and then we can start to, you know, have a relationship with the Father. Right. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so that's what, it, and I get to say, because people say it all the time, Jesus died for my sins. Well, that don't mean he gave you a sin card that you can now <laughs> just go sin as much as you want. Right. You know, he gave you a way of purifying those sins away to where you're now not going to be held accountable for them. And that way is through baptism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If only the pastors and uh, ministers would let the people know that, like you said, just because the Messiah uh, died for your sins does not mean that you have a sin card to go out and just wild it up and do whatever. That's not the case. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you have to remember that many of our ministers have gone through seminary school which actually makes them agents of the government. Mm -hmm. you know? I, believe that. I hear a lot of people saying that same thing where they are told what to say. They're told exactly, yeah, they, they, they're told what to say. They're indoctrinated into the government type ministry. And, you know, so a lot of this they don't understand and or they are not really permitted to teach it, mm -hmm. even if they did. Mm -hmm. You know, they may lose their certifications. They're definitely going to use their congregations. So, you know, they don't really have the choice. Right. And 77, thus she finished the explanation of the tower. So there you have it, guys. You have the Simitude's version of what these stones are. 
And I'm going to say it one more time. Go over to Similitudes because you'll see the same explanations in more, much more detail um, in, in Similitudes. Right here, Hermes is not quite ready to hear from an angel yet. He, and so he has to get this information by way of a dream or a vision. But over in Similitudes, he's actually going to be hearing from an angel directly. Mm -hmm. And so he's going to get a lot more detail, a lot more understanding, and it points to the more present world. Uh, in Similitudes, it's a lot more hands-on. Yeah, it's definitely more hands-on. But we're going to continue this series here because, again, this is our last chapter and we will have done a verse by verse study of this entire book right so make sure you have that subscription button pushed and that bell notification button pushed so you can see when the rest of these classes come out and in the meantime go over and get the shepherd of hers you can even listen to it on youtube by way of an audio book and i'm seeing a lot of people on the comments saying that they are purchasing it yeah they are getting this book well you know I think one person um, on the comment, um, I believe he said that he ordered one and uh, they didn't send it. And so he notified them that they didn't send it and that he actually got two back and he was um, giving one away during the comments. Yeah, I think he already managed. Somebody jumped on it, definitely. <laughs> yeah. So they sent it to me, even posted their address right there. <laughs> right, yeah. Well, that's great. That's They're anxious about getting hey, it. That, hey, that's great. Yeah. You know, you know, it's important to get this information, but there's other ways you can get this uh, file that we're talking about here. You can print it off if you wanted to. Um, you can order the book. Uh, it's in the Lost Books of the Bible and the Forgotten Books of Eden. You can find uh, cheap copies for as little as three bucks, you know, or you can try to get the hard copy, brand new copy if you wanted to. But we highly suggest you go over and read this book called The Shepherd of Hermes because it is absolutely necessary. What we're learning here is necessary to make it into this kingdom of heaven. Yeah. There will be no wicked people in the kingdom of heaven. Mm. So us people who are wicked, yeah. we're going to have to learn how to change and clean ourselves up. Right. And praise our Father for his word that he gave us the opportunity to learn what our flaws are so that we can work to start cleaning them up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, well, if you got anything out of this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button, but leave us a comment either way. And shalom. Shalom.